So, welcome, Eli. I'm up? Okay. You are on. You are on. Oh, man. Well, so, uh, okay, I'm just going to start with my, my notes. Uh, this message on my heart is out of the book of Revelation, but don't worry, it's not too crazy or anything. And um, it's not like an end times message. It's just really what's been on my heart. And it's really what I've been studying. Um, I'm in the, the thick of it, like in my own heart. And so I, I was searching and searching for, you know, a message and I just kept coming back to this. So hopefully, you know, thank God it's the word of God. So if nothing else, it, it, it will, it'll stir you. Um, even though, you know, you guys are on fire as it is, but, um, so let's see, uh, you know, with revelation, there's so many different, um, perspectives and interpretations. I am by far no theologian. Um, I am very unqualified for this. So I'm just going to speak from my heart and what I've been walking through with the Lord. Um, I believe that the Holy Spirit's going to stir your, he's going to give you your own um, interpretations, perceptions, uh, whatever it is right now he's speaking. Um, this book just, it just speaks. It never stops speaking. It's, it's so amazing. So I'm kind of condensing like a lot. So hopefully like if you haven't read, um, like the first and second chapter of Revelation, you'll, this will stir you to go and, and um, just look at it again. But I have a feeling you guys have maybe been in Revelation. So if this is a repeat, that's my disclaimer. Sorry. All right. So this is my Bible. Um, I'm just going to read my, so this message, there's no particular topic. Again, I, but, but even typing this up, I was getting so emotional. So I'm not really sure how it's going to wrap up. I just know that God's going to wrap it up somehow. Totally trusting in him. Um, uh, let's see. When I, when I was trying to find like, okay, Lord, like what's going to be the outcome to this? Like, what is the point of this message? And yeah, like a lot of the point is, the seven letters to the churches. Um, but it's also the Lord said, it's about me, you know, and there's nothing better than just peering into the depths of God and just being in awe and wonder. He, he's so amazing, you know, so can't beat that. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, Revelations 1 and 3. I'm going to read and then just kind of go over uh, my notes. Oh, this is what the Lord told me too. You know, um, that for this right now in these pressing times, um, just that we were going to listen with, with fresh ears. Uh, we were going to see with, with open eyes filled with, like I said, with wonder and awe. Um, and that he was going to really touch us in the innermost depths of our heart um, and awaken us even deeper. And uh, I know a lot of you guys probably know this stuff, but it's important that we take heed and, and keep the, the wisdom and the warnings on, on the front of our heart all the time because, because things are changing quick in the earth. So um, let's see. So yeah, the, the revelation, the unveiling, uncovering, uh, it's, it's a really important reference to what we're all seeing before our eyes right now. Uh, the things happening in the earth, uh, it's happening in the skies, uh, it's happening in our hearts. Like for some, this is super exciting times, like it is for me. Um, there's also been times where I have you know, the Lord brings stuff in the heart, in the heart to service, to surface. And, you know, you got to take care of that. It's, it's all about the heart, um, more than ever. I mean, really. Um, so, uh, an update with me first is like, God's been giving me a lot of dreams and super trippy dreams, like, um, 
dreams where I've had to step out in faith and get a hold of somebody and, and tell them the dream. And, you know, it never, it, it always shocks me to see how the Lord works through that. Um, one of those dreams was for, um, I won't say names cause it doesn't matter, but it was for someone that we know and, but I don't really talk to this person that much, but she's really cool. Um, and she's well known, but like, I, so I was super intimidated, you know, which we should never be. We're all just people. Um, but she's really known for being prophetic. So I felt like, oh, geez, you know, um, but in the dream, I'm just going to read the dream. Um, not the whole dream, but, um, so in the dream, it was so descriptive. God, God had, there was an entire underground city. It was almost like Vegas. And, um, it was in, it was underground. It was in the subways. It was in everywhere. It was just this gnarly town, but then there was an earthquake and the whole town collapsed on top of the town underneath. Well, weeks had gone by and there was no survivors. They couldn't get down into the rubble because it was, it was like impossible. The whole city just boom collapsed. Um, so after weeks and weeks, um, everyone just knew that everyone was dead. But this, as I'm walking in this dream, this, um, this person was on her face, pressed into the ground near one of the old subway entrances to get down into the town and she would not relent. And um, I noticed people walking by like going, man, this lady's crazy. Like, the people are dead. What are you even praying for now? Um, for the rubble, you know, and they were mocking her. So I go up and, um, in the dream. And when she looks at me and turns back, what was, what was, what made an impression on me was when she lifted her face, the gravel was, was like just embedded and her face was completely scratched up. Um, cause she had been pressing in so deep well, with that, all of a sudden there was a shifting, like a small earthquake, but I knew in the dream immediately it, it was a shifting and the rubble began to move. And all of a sudden a hand came out and people began to run and help and thousands and thousands of people were saved. So then I called her, I, I wrote it all down for her and I finally got a hold of her um, online and I told her the whole thing. And, um, she said, she said, Eli, like, you have no idea. So many people, so many people like speak into my life. And, and because I'm well known, like I have my, my core group of intercessors, but I asked God to speak to me directly through someone who doesn't usually speak into my life. And I have been standing and believing and pressing in, um, even when I was alone, even when I was left pressing in alone. Well, the next day they discovered um, all those tunnels in New York and all those kids that they had rescued. So I was like, wow, that's crazy. So anyway, lots of stuff like that about uncovering. And um, I had another dream about Fresno. Um, and I, for some reason I went down the sewer to um, take a shortcut because I didn't want to cross the bulldog gangs. And when I go down there, there's, there's this river, but all these people are stuck in the river. And I'm like, well, I'll go get help. And, and this guy shouts, he says, no, we need Tom. Tom knows how to get us out. He knows how to get us out. I'm like, Tom who? And they said who it was. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I haven't seen that guy in 20 years. So I find him on Facebook. Turns out he's from Fresno and just cool stuff like that. Um, so anyway, the point is um, what the Lord's been putting on my heart is with the seven, seven letters to the churches. And it's for me in this particular message, I'm just going to be talking about the seven places in, in the Christian walk. There's seven types of Christians right now on the face of the earth good or bad, you know, um, and it's really important we stay strong and, and, and wise not to fall into any traps or compromise. Like it's, it's a really important time. And also to pray for those around us because so many people, you guys are warriors. So none of this is coming as a 
condemning or rebuke or anything to you guys. Um, I mean, if, and if there was something in your own hearts, that's totally between you and God, but you know, it's, this isn't the message tonight. The message really from the Lord was how important it is that you guys pray and, and, and just keep this stuff in mind because we got to pray for the body because it's a hot mess. It's the most dysfunctional family I've ever seen in my life <laughs> around the world. Okay. Okay. It's cool. Including me. Okay. So, uh, let's see. So we're just going to get going. Okay. So with all this amazing stuff going on right now, it's mind blowing how many Christians are like totally missing it. It's, it's crazy, right? Um, so let me get to my thing. I'm going to read out of the passions. So feel free to follow along if you want. Uh, the passion is awesome. It's cool. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to start at uh, 9, 1, 9. I'm not going to just go through it. It's just kind of going to skip around because, like I said, I got to condense it. Um, so let's see. Okay. So I, John, am your brother and companion in tribulation. The kingdom and the patience that is found in Jesus. I was exiled on the island of Patmos because of the ministry of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. And to those that don't know um, the word um, Patmos or Patmos, it means um, my crushing. Like, yeah, it's just super deep. Um, so anyway, so be, uh, there it is. Uh, I was in the spiritual realm on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice sounding like a trumpet saying to me, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, uh, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, that one was easy, uh, Laodicea. <laughs> um, okay, so verse 12, when I turn to see the voice, this is important, when I turn to see the voice that was speaking to me, I saw seven golden lampstands, and walking among the lampstands, I saw someone like the Son of Man wearing a full-length robe with a golden sash over his chest. So going back to 12, uh, the word turned, and you guys will relate to this because I know that you, you operate heavily in the spiritual realm. Um, ah, so the word turned is epi, epistrepho. And to break that down, the, the first part of the word means turn to, but at the same time, it means to turn against. Um, so he's turning against the natural realm and his spirit is turning to the spiritual realm. And we, we're all in that. That's a war constantly, you know, but for him, um, he was turning, he had to turn away. It's a physical, it's just, it it's a physical and a spiritual thing happening at the same time. Um, and then, but it also means um, that the strefo also means um, converted. So you're turning away and turning to, and you're changed forever. So John's saying like, man, like he, he left everything he knew and he was never the same. Um, and then to see the voice of God, I just, this is the part I was getting emotional today, just thinking about the Lord, you know. Um, I hope God never gets boring because that is a scary place to be. Um, so to see the voice, I thought that was just so cool. And so um, see is, um, is blepo. But what that means, and this is cool, is to see something physical with spiritual results, 
That is, it carries what is seen into the non-physical. So the voice of God, uh, we could ponder that like just forever, right? So I just wrote earlier, uh, the voice of God is not a sound um, like we know on earth, but a massive, indescribable substance. John describes it as the sound of many waters. Um, I, I picture incredible frequency that would destroy us if we actually heard him like all the way. Um, like thunder. Um, it's the very voice that all creation came forth from. And uh, just creation exploded from the mouth of God. And uh, I imagine like, he said, okay, it was like many waters. So I was just imagining um, like, have you, if you've ever stood by a, a great waterfall and the sound of the, the, the powerful water just slamming into the, the ground, the, the, the water beneath, and it's just all around you. You can feel it through your body, that frequency, but that's nothing, you know, compared to what it was probably like. Um, so, so then John drops up to the ground. He's like, dude, I'm like dead. Like, I can't take it. And almost immediately after that, from that powerful thunder, raging water of a voice, he feels a gentle hand on his right shoulder, a reassuring voice um, that tells him, you know, don't yield to fear. Uh, it's okay, like I'm here, everything's gonna be okay. I just, I wanna tell you something. Uh, so I love how, uh, I just love how the Lord has always lowered himself and stooped to our level. He's, he'll become so small just to comfort us and speak gently to us. And he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to do any of it. It's just, for me, I just, that's just such a perfect picture of love. John falling to the ground and just trembling like, God, I, I can't, like, and there's Jesus, or, you know, there's the Lord right there. Like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. Um, and the first thing, which I think is always important, the very first thing out of his mouth is, do not yield to fear. Um, that in itself is a whole nother sermon, you know, heavenly emotions. We're not just going to go to heaven and like be these robots. Like there are full on kingdom emotions and feelings and wants and needs. And, um, you know, thank God there won't be suffering, but can you imagine just the, the fullness of joy? Um, so with that, uh, so, yeah, with that said, to the letters. Um, so these letters um, are literally, <laughs> this, I was cracking up with God earlier, like literally, God wrote a book of life. He's like, dude, like you guys aren't really very smart, but I love you. This is a book, it's called Life. And then he's like, <laughs> he's like, and on top of that, I'm going to even write seven letters to all of you because it, you're all still a hot mess and I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to spell it all out what it's going to look like. And I'm going to tell you what to do about it and still look at us. But anyway, and I just, I'm just like, man, thank God the Lord has patience. Um, so, um, right. It's just, so in these letters, you see warning after warning message after message, like begging us, like begging believers to repent or to hold on, uh, to not give up. Don't give in. Cling to everything that you have spiritually um, to wake up. Like God is just pleading with us. I mean, if that's not humility, it's just incredible. Um, anyway, so, um, so the letter to Ephesus. And I'm going to breeze through these, so don't worry. I'm not going to... I hope everyone's okay. Is everyone okay? Give me a... Okay. Am I okay? I'm okay. Okay. 
Jeez. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> so this was the letter to Ephesus. I'm not going to do the, the pre thing, but um, verse two, I know all that you've done for me. You have worked hard and persevered. I know that you don't tolerate evil. You have tested those who claim to be apostles and proved they're not. For they were imposters. I also know how you have bravely endured trials and persecutions because of my name. Yet you have not become discouraged. So that's cool. Like God like kind of helps build us up a little and then he's going to like, okay, but <laughs> that's awesome. Some positive reinforcement and then like, okay, but check it out. Uh, I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love you once had for me in the beginning. Think about how far you've fallen. Repent and do works of love as you did at first. I will come to you and remove your lampstand and your place of influence if you do not repent. Although to your credit, you despise the uh, practices of the Nicolaitans, which was people that over-controlled people, which I also despise. The one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying now, not later. So for me, like, this is now. This is for all believers all the time. Um, to the one who overcomes, I will give access to feast on the fruit of the tree of life that is found in the paradise of God. So, so like I said, I've just been studying this on my own um, and just in general. Um, so Ephesus means desirable. It means uh, darling. It's actually the same Greek word that a bridegroom would use for his bride. Um, so I wrote, they, so they lost their passion, their love for the Lord. God doesn't care about how many followers we have on YouTube. He doesn't care, uh, you know, if they have the, if someone has the biggest Christian hit in the world, um, he knows our heart. And what he's saying is, you know, you can be one of the biggest names out there, but if you're not motivated by love, and you can't be motivated by love if you don't love God. Um, everything else is like perverted and distorted and broken. The only purest love comes straight from God's heart. Um, so he was like, so these people had major influence. Um, and and I'm, I'm talking about Christians today. You know, there are people today, they look really good on the outside. But they, they have nothing in the inside. They don't have passion. They still love God. They, you know, all that stuff, but they're not passionate anymore. Um, so this reminded me of a really cool quote that I love. It says, I'm not interested if you've stood with the great. I care if you've sat with the broken. And so God's saying, you don't have love in your heart anymore. I'm about to take away your influence because what's the point, you know, um, in this, in this day of an age, um, or day of age, I don't know how they say that, but, um, I, I really feel, um, in this time, it's a shaking, um, it's a shifting, it's a, so many S words, it's a sifting, lots of sifting going on, and the uncovering, it's all happening, um, like I said, the Pharisees looked really good on the outside, but they lacked passion, intimacy with God, and love for others. So again, like a big downfall for that type of, of Christian right now. So moving on, um, the second letter was to Smyrna, and um, Smyrna means sweet smelling. Uh, it comes from the word myrrh as you know, which was used as a spice to embalm the dead. Um, 
So let's go forward. So, um, verse nine. Uh, chapter two, verse nine. I am aware of all the painful difficulties you have passed through in your financial hardships, even though in fact you possess great treasure. And I am fully aware of the slander that has come against you from those who claim to be Jews. That's interesting. Could unpack that one for a long time. <laughs> those who claim to be Jews, but they are not, for they are a satanic congregation. Do not yield to fear in the face of suffering, but be aware of this. The devil is about to have some of you thrown into prison. The, the original word wasn't just prison, it was torture house. Torture house. Um, and we know there's so many different kinds of prisons, right? Um, to test your faith. For 10 days you will have distress, but remain faithful to the day you die. And I will give you the victor's crown of life. The one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is presently saying to all the churches. The one who conquers will not be harmed by the second death. So, in this one, let's see. So the church in uh, Smyrna had, had suffered so great. Um, and yet their suffering gave off the most fragrant, fragrant perfume. They were ultimately crushed by Roman persecution. They were all completely crushed. Um, these people were the richest at heart and yet suffered the most. Families, children, babies, like, and the worst of the worst were done. Uh, and yet they still did not renounce their faith. To me, that's just amazing. They, just as Christ laid down his life for them, they truly laid down their lives for him in return because they were too in love with the Lord to ever look back. They had no choice. They had to move forward. There was no, there was no plan B. And, and the Romans were brutal. They would kill and torture your family in front of you first and then kill you. They wanted you to have the most pain. Like it was so sad. And um, the truth is, uh, this is happening right now in the world. And yet so many in, of the body of Christ are just looking the other way. Um, it's, it sucks, like for real. Um, and I will say, I'm, I'm telling you this greatly upsets God. It's not okay. And, and yeah, uh, like it's happening right now. Uh, I know David Kingsley, uh, when he went to China, he, he met with an underground church. I don't know if he's ever told you this story, but this woman ran up to him weeping and he'll never get her out of his mind. And she was just sobbing. And she said, don't you guys know about us? Don't you guys know? Do you not know about us? How we're suffering? What we're going through? For, for Jesus, like, do you guys really not know? And David wept and he said, I'm sorry, but I hate to say it, but they do. They do. Um, so, okay, so the third letter. <clears throat> so the third one is, uh, here we go. Oh yeah, Pergamum, another weird, hard one to say. Pergamum means married, but not to the Lord. So don't get excited. <laughs> It basically meant married to Satan. It was the Roman, it was the center of the Roman um, emperor worship. Uh, it was described as the place where Satan himself was enthroned. It was all bad right there, let me tell you. So let's see what happened to the church over there. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> okay. 
All right. <laughs> you can read this so many different ways. <laughs> it starts with, I know where you live. <laughs> so God, I know where you live, but <laughs> I try to like read God's voice as like a father and not like, you know. So I know where you live, where Satan sits enthroned, yet you still cling faithfully uh, to the power of my name. You didn't deny your faith. And, um, oh, even in the days of my faithful martyr, um, Antipas, who was executed in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Well, thank you, Lord, for breaking it to me that way. That was kind of nice at first, but here we go. <laughs> I have a few things against you. There are some of you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, or it's kind of like Baal, um, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to eat things that were sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Furthermore, you have some who hold to the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, which mean they're like total control freaks. So repent then, or I will come swiftly to war against them with the sword that is in my mouth. But the one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is presently saying to all the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will let him feast on the hidden manna and give him a shining white stone. And written upon the stone is inscribed his new name known only to the one who receives it. So there's so much, again, this is condensed, but you gotta go back and just, I mean, man, I've been in this stuff for weeks and it's barely even, barely gotten to the surface. Uh, so, so with this one, uh, here, here we go. So what they did wrong was, they kind of represent uh, Christians that compromise. So yeah, they love the Lord and yeah, everything's fine, but they let sin happen and they, they let things go on that wasn't right. Um, they let compromise creep into their congregation. They overlooked sin and they knew people were deceiving others. Um, James 4, 17, remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and not do it. So just because they weren't directly sinning, they let fear of either confrontation or fear of losing money or, or people or likes on YouTube. Um, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, they let all of that take away from their place as leaders and to keep that congregation um, healthy. And so this is huge today. We call it sloppy grace. Um, no one wanting to offend anyone. Sin and immortality being overlooked uh, for fear of, yeah, whatever it is, confrontation, offense, loss of straight up people giving money, whatever it is out there, there's just, it's rampant. Um, and it's been overlooked so long that now it's, it's taken root in the body of Christ. Um, millions of people have been led away by deception because of the watered down fluffy gospel. Like it's so, it's so important that, um, we don't water it down. And, Billy Graham, he never watered it down. Like the guy wasn't this born, eloquent, amazing like speaker, but he was so anointed it didn't matter. He just matter of factly said the way things were and God moved in the hearts of man. Um, my friend uh, went to one of his crusades one time and she said, Eli, it was so weird. Like we're sitting there, there's thousands of people and I thought his message was going to be, I mean, he was Billy Graham, like he was going to give this amazing thing. And he just got up there and he's like, come on. I know that, you know, 
you you know you need the Lord. What's holding you back? Just come on, quit messing around. Just just get down here, accept Jesus. And she uh, she said that there was this group of, of kids just messing around and like throwing food and being super disruptive. But when he gave that call, all these people just stood up and whoosh, went down there. They like looked at each other like, oh crap, I'm gonna go down there. Like so, just a good example of trusting God and not having to always know the right thing to say, just knowing God's going to move through truth and the gospel. Um, so yeah, that church compromise. Uh, so the next one is Christ's letter to uh, Thyatira. And that's going to be chapter two, and we're going to start at verse 19. Uh, I know all that you've done for me, your love and faith, your ministry and steadfast perseverance. In fact, you now excel in these virtues more, more than you did at first. Like, that's amazing. Um, but I have this against you. You, this one's pretty bad, you guys. No. <laughs> you are forgiving that woman Jezebel, uh-oh, who calls herself a prophetess, and is seducing my loving servants. She is teaching that it is permissible to indulge in sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I have waited for her to repent from her vile immorality, but she willingly refuses. Now I will lay her low with terrible distress along with all her adulterous partners if they don't repent. And I will strike down her followers with a deadly plague. Hmm, plague, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> then all of the congregations will realize that I am the one who thoroughly searches the most secret thoughts and innermost being. I will give to each one what their works deserve. But to the rest of you, who didn't adhere to the teachings of Jezebel um, and have not been initiated into deep satanic secrets. The real stuff right here. I say to you, without laying upon you any other burden, cling tightly to all that you have until I appear. Like, man, this Satan is running rampant. Just hold tightly to me. Um, to everyone who is victorious and continues to do my works, to the very end, I will give you authority over the nations to shepherd them with a, with a royal scepter. But to the rebellious, will, they will be shattered as clay pots. Even as I have received authority from the presence of my father, I will give the morning star to the one who experiences victory. I'm just going to stop there. Um, so, so Thyatira, um, it means continual sacrifice, but not in like, I'm a living sacrifice. It's actually the opposite. It's um, in a striving way like continuously having to sacrifice, repent, like bondage, uh, like religion, like there's so many different kinds, but um, instead of Jesus being the one and only true ultimate sacrifice. Um, the Passion says that <clears throat> digging deeper into the word, oh, many scholars say the breakdown actually means odor of affliction. So what's interesting is we have two different um, churches that are being persecuted and going through all this stuff. One's fragrance is sweet smelling and it goes up to the Lord and he's with them. He's, he's there all every step of the way comforting them. This one, the odor is affliction. Um, it's rejected. It's, it's not, it's not real. It's not from the heart of a true believer. Um, it's bondage being caused on themselves because of secret sin. 
Um, so <clears throat> this church allowed Jezebel. She ravaged and seduced its people. This evil shows up in all kinds of forms, but to believers, it is secret sin, porn, lust, adultery, dark fantasies, masturbation, all this stuff. And uh, so people, so people were sinning in secret and not coming forward, not repenting. So there's all these people living double lives. I mean, this is huge today. It's always been huge. I mean, um, but it's worse, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, so in this particular church, and even today, among your friends, sometimes we never know who's really serving the Lord and who's living a double life. Um, and with Jezebel, she she would take her victims, um, she would take them into the deepest, darkest sexual sin, uh, and then she would bury them in shame. And then with the body of Christ and, and all the other dysfunction, there hasn't, and for many, many, many years, there's just starting to now, but there hasn't been a very welcoming place to come forward. People have felt so shamed. Um, and it, that is the worst kind of bondage. And that kind of suffering is not a fragrance that the Lord accepts. It's not an incense that he accepts. He, he accepts repentance. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, and again, God, in this, in this letter, God's saying, run home to me. Just run home to me, please. I'm warning you. I wrote you a letter from me. Come home. It's okay. Um, and we just, as the body of Christ, for one, we got to always run to our leaders, always run to God, no matter what, like all of us have hangups and we always want to be a safe place for other people. We always want to put it out there. I'm really open with my my issues because I know it helps walls break down from people that might feel like they can't be open with their issues. I've, I've always seen it do more good. I've never seen it do harm for me to just, hey, throw myself on blast. Like, you know, when I get mad, sometimes I drop the F-bomb and I'm working on it, Lord, you know, stuff like that, you know. Lord Jesus, but, um, all right, uh, so five, is everyone still okay? Okay, so I know it's a lot of information, um, but we're going to get to a really good point. <laughs> all right, uh, oh, okay, so five is the letter to Sardis, um, in my notes, and this is going to be chapter three. Uh, verse, huh, it's weird, it's not really a verse right there, where the letter starts in verse one, um, the end of verse one. So, uh, Sardis means those who escaped, and it also means the red ones. Interesting. I, I don't have some deep thing with that. Uh, <laughs> Sardis, Sardis represents, um, Christians today that are totally asleep. Uh, they go through the motions. They're not really there. Nobody's home. Hello? Anyway, so I'm going to read the letter. <laughs> um, I know all you've done for me, and I know that you have a reputation for being really alive, but you're actually dead. Mm. Ugh. Wake up. Strengthen all that remains before it dies. Can you just hear God's heart just pleading with us? Like, man. Um, I haven't found your works to be perfect in my sight. So remember all the things you've received and heard. Then turn back to God and obey them. For if you continue to slumber, I will come to you like a thief and you'll have no idea what hour I will come. Yet there are still a few in Sardis who have remained pure, and they will walk in fellowship with me in brilliant light, for they are, are worthy. And the one who experiences victory will be dressed in a white robe, and I will never, 
No, never erase their name from the book of life. That's interesting. I'm not, I, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'm just going to stop there because that's pretty much the point. So, um, so with, with Sardis, not only were they captured and taken down once because they were asleep and not alert and not staying watchful, but it happened again. <laughs> so this definitely reflects um, much of the Western church today. I mean, if you can look all around us, um, 1 John 4, 8 says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. So if we, if we can sleep soundly and slumber through the night without a care in the world, knowing, and I don't mean burdens, I don't mean carrying something God is supposed to carry, not us, but to just not care, knowing that people all around us are dying, going to hell, starving, hurting, um, in refugee camps, the whole thing, like, I don't know. Um, if these are people that don't even pray and intercede, their heart is asleep. Um, it's a really big problem. So, but this isn't like a message on salvation. This is just scary to think I have lots of friends that are asleep right now and all this crazy stuff is going on and God is speaking so profound in the earth and they're just like watching TV and just not, not there. Like they don't even pray. Like I'll pray for them. I'll call to pray with them. Like trying to like awaken to God, you know, um, it's scary. And I don't ever want to be in that place. No way. Um, so, okay. I'm going to skip Philadelphia. We're going to do that last. So we're going to go over to, uh, Laodicea. And that's going to be, uh, let's see, chapter three, verse, verse 15. We're getting there, you guys. Oh, um, okay. So, so this word, Laodicea, actually means self-righteousness. Uh, <clears throat> I know all that you do. And, and God still like, kind of like gives them a compliment, you know, Hey, you know, I see all this good stuff, but <laughs> it's just funny to me. Okay. Um, I know all that you do. Uh, but I know that you need, you're neither frozen in apathy nor fervent in passion. How I wish you were either or the other, either one or the other, but because you're neither, you're neither cold nor hot but lukewarm. I am about to spit you out of my mouth. <laughs> you claim to be rich and you're getting richer. I don't need a thing, you say, yet you're clueless that you're miserable. You're poor, you're blind, you're barren, and you're naked. Ooh. So I counsel you to purchase gold perfected fire. <laughs> now he's just being sarcastic. <laughs> then you'll be truly rich or hey you can purchase a white garment and cover yourself and clothe your shame your clothe oh clothe your shameful atom nakedness Ooh. purchase some eye salve while you're at it and um, place that over your eyes and then maybe you could truly see all those I dearly love I unmask and train so repent and be eager to pursue what is right. Behold, I am standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come into you and feast with you and you will feast with me. So, so yeah, there's kind of, I don't, I don't think there's anything really worse than being a lukewarm 
Christian, um, a believer that lives for themselves, they just don't pursue God. Like this is such the Western church as well. Unfortunately, so, so there's so many great believers and wonderful churches. So I'm not bashing the church at all, but we're, we're all the church. And there's just, unfortunately, like more self centered Christians right now in our society. Um, so uh, the Lord showed me, you know, many of this type of believer I, I'm not saying all of them, but the Lord knows the heart, but these are the type of people on judgment day that are going to cry out and they're going to be like, Lord, it's me. It's Bob. Remember, you know me. I'm Bob, dude. Like we're homies, please Lord. And the Lord's going to be like, dude, I don't know you at all. I don't know you depart from me. I never knew you. And that's devastating. Like that is so sad um, because the deception is so great. Um, something really profound about verse 20 is standing at the door and knocking. Um, the original uh, and the original wording and interpretation for that is the where to go here? I find it. Um, so the Aramaic um, translation, and and everywhere in the Bible, it's the same translation. And and back in ancient in the ancient Jewish wedding um, process and um, tradition, the night before the wedding, the the bridegroom would show up at the door with his father. And they would knock. And if the, if the woman opened the door all the way, and it had to be all the way, they would come in and it would be yes. But if she didn't open the door all the way, that was a no. And so the Lord's like, open the door of your heart. Like if you're not, I'm not really all the way in there. You can't, you can't have just part of me in there. Like, um, I don't know. There's just so much, there's so much in that. Just all of it. I just think that's so beautiful, you know? And again, God's saying, but hey, it's not too late. It's okay. It's all right. Like, we can fix this. I wrote a book and a letter. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back to Phil the Church of Philadelphia. It's the last one. Put you guys through this. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's going to be chapter 3, verse 8. Now we're at the good stuff, okay? So Philadelphia means brotherly love. This, this is literally the only church that God did not rebuke. Um, when, okay, I'll read it first. Uh, I know all that you do, and... I know that you have a reputation. Oh, wait, wrong one. Hold on. I was like, wait, stop. Here we go. I know all you've done. <laughs> I know all that you've done. Now I have set before you a wide open door. That sounds familiar, huh? Wide open door. Um, that no one can shut. For I know that you possess, I know that you possess only a little power. Yet you've kept my word and haven't denied my name. Watch now how I deal with those in the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews. Once again, all these imposters, but they're not. They're lying. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and acknowledge how much I've loved you. Now that's cool. Like, wow. That's better than just someone saying, oh, you're so great, and I'm so sorry, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, like, God loves you so much. Like, I can't even look at your face. It's crazy. Um, don't kill me, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, because you've passionately kept my message of perseverance, 
I will also keep you from the hour of proving. Um, that can also be pruning as well. Um, that is coming to test every person on earth. I think we're definitely in that as well. Not necessarily this specific one, but we're definitely, we've hit a layer of, of a pruning and a shifting and, and if, unless you're asleep, um, you've got to be thinking about God in the earth right now. Um, he's speaking all over. Um, so, um, but I can't, but I will come swiftly. So cling tightly to what you have so that no one can seize your crown of victory. For the one who is victorious, I will make you a pillar in the sanctuary of my God. I will write on you the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. I'll write my own name on you so that, so the one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the spirit is saying now to all the churches. Um, man. So, so when God spoke, so these were actual letters back then and they were sent out and then like all the stuff that had been going on, but also the, they're still speaking for eternity. And so, but back then, um, when he was speaking about pillars and you're going to be permanently secure, there had been a massive earthquake that leveled the entire city. And not only did they really not have much, but now they really had nothing. Um, and on top of that, they, they weren't, weren't really known for anything. So God, uh, so this letter must have come as just such a word. Like, can you imagine like God saying, I'm with you. I see you. Everything around you is shaking to the ground, but I'm right here and you're a pillar. you you guys are immovable. Uh, I'm proud of you. Uh, I really see this as you guys, and I know we're not perfect, but I saved this one for last because I just felt God's heart all over this for, for all of you. Um, so the key of, the key of David uh, unlocks intimacy and prayer. Um, and that is, that is what a true relationship with the Father is. It's, it's knowing that to access the spiritual realm, it's to get through God's heart. It's, it's going, it's accessing him through intimacy. It, that's where it all starts. It's not some loud prayer or some big stage. Like it's none of that. And, and all of that is such a slippery trap, especially now. Like, um, but I really felt like your guys' heart, your guys' heart is such a, a sweet fragrance. Like, the Lord, he's so proud of you. Like, in a time where so many people are off work and they're just, you know, sitting at home, getting fatter, watching TV, just sort of wandering, like, you guys decided to up your meetings and to press in more, to press in deeper, and like, you just have no idea how much that makes God's day. Like in a world of so many phonies, like for real. Um, and so the emblem, and this, this is you guys really, the emblem of a pillar points to a sure and fixed position upholding and supporting the kingdom purposes of God. And like, when I was typing all this up today, I was getting so emotional and I, I just didn't know why. And it's because it's so like refreshing to, to encounter other believers that are fighting for people that are lost, like that are truly on your face, gravel pressed into, scraped from the gravel because you will not relent. 
just going after God, but not just going after God for you. Like you guys are going after God to break chains, to like help people be free. And you might never see the rewards because you're traveling in the spiritual realm. Like it's, there's no way to even think you'll see a reward here on earth. Like there's nothing more pure than that. And man, after going through all these different types of Christians and then to get to this one and I'm like, Oh Lord, like your heart, like it, it means so much to God. And like to know that, to really know that you're a pillar, like you guys are a pillar. You're a safe place. You're not judgmental. You're, you're welcoming. Um, I felt like there's going to be a lot of newer people coming after this. I just felt like a, just a big expansion and, and not about, and I know you guys aren't about numbers and heads and faces. You fed me and my, my street peeps. Like you, you'll never have to convince me otherwise that your heart isn't about God's heart. Um, but there's going to be people coming that, that need that they're going to need that love because the body of Christ has rejected them. And it really sucks right now. Um, but we can't judge them either because we can't let them get our hearts to sin or, or grow a bitter root, you know? Um, and I have to always check myself cause I can get like super mad, like really, um, trying to find this, this last week, I've been working with a 15 year old girl and get this, her name's Trinity. Um, she's been raped. She's been trafficked. She's tried to kill herself. She has such bad PTSD that, that most days she, she just sits there clenching her fists and try to breathe. Like, like it's so bad. I was absolutely okay with her having a little bit of CBD so she didn't kill herself. Like it was that bad. I'm like, dude, like Lord, um, I'm calling everywhere in the country to get this little girl into a place. And you know how much they are? 24 grand. Even Teen Challenge for kids, $24,000. And I felt my heart like a, okay, like I definitely sinned in my heart, but I repented. I'm like, dude, I don't remember Jesus charging $24,000 for a little girl named Trinity, named after God, like to, to get help. And, and these people weren't even like budging, not Teen Challenge, all these other places. Finally, I got a hold of this place in Arizona. And the lady was so sweet. I said, look, like the mom's on government assistance. This family has been through so much. The dad shot himself in the head in front of them. Like nothing has gone good. Um, please, like your, your website says it's, it's like 24 grand. Um, she said, well, let me see what we can do. Let's, let's fill out a scholarship form. She was super cool. We ended up getting a $20,000 scholarship. The girl, she, Trinity got in, um, we raised the rest of the money. Um, my husband and I were just, Hey, you know what? We'll just tithe to her. Why not? That sounds good. We're still tithing to God. And like her name's Trinity. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like, um, her mom, when I told her mom, her mom just broke down weeping and said, are you talking about springboard? And I said, yeah. And she said, that was the place I was telling you that I really wanted. But when I saw a price tag, I guess I just didn't think God was big enough. And I'm just on government assistance. And, you know, and I'm like, dude, she's in. Turns out it's in Tucson. And this family's um, grandparents live in Tucson five minutes away. Like, if that's not God, like, I don't know what to tell you. But do you know how many Christians turned her away? Like it, it is that bad right now. So God, but God made a way, but I had to be relentless. If I had given up the first like 20 no's when there was nowhere to go, like, 
I mean, I definitely pulled the family advocate card, even though I have no college degree, <laughs> but hey, I'm a family advocate. What am I doing right now, right? And she, uh, she took me a little more seriously, you know, but I had to actually do that. Um, I mean, I didn't lie or anything, but you know what I mean? I had to seem more important for them to take it more important. And, and even that sucks, but um, so anyway, my point is this, like, and I know I'm talking late, but like, I don't even, like I said, I didn't really know what the point of this message was. It's just so deep in my heart right now. And to know with everything going on, how valuable you are to the Lord and to the body of Christ is so important. I, um, I don't know. I mean, really, that's about it. I, I did want to open up a little bit because I know it's getting close to eight o'clock, but I definitely wanted to, um, if anything, through all of this, I hope you hear God's love and it's not condemning at all. Like, even if he calls us out on, on dumb things that we do, like he, he always tells us to run home. So any struggles or anything that's in anyone's heart, um, you know, all we got to do is just give it to him. But definitely, I don't, I, I know the enemy is trying to come after your, your value, maybe on a private level, maybe when you see other people in the generals, you think, oh gosh, like, they're probably like, they're so prophetic and God just totally like uses them. And I don't know my place and all this. No, God, God's the reason that you're part of the generals. God's the reason he's put, he strung all of you guys together and where one might be a little bit weaker, someone else is stronger and vice versa. And if you don't know like your place, if you're not really sure, ask Delinda, ask Teresa and Kim, ask somebody, just say it. Like this whole secret thing, we, we can't afford to um, keep anything in that's potentially toxic, you know? Um, God is just using you guys in so many ways. And I knew that, I knew that the, the trafficking, those kids being saved, all of that, like, I knew that your prayers had a part of that too. And there's more to come. There's like, where you guys are traveling. And I really wanted to say like how, I mean, I'm not, I don't mean to say traveling, but you know what I mean? And it's very, it's God centered and um, never let your faith like dwindle because you really are, you guys are really fighting along with angels. And there's never been a time like this where God's army has partnered with angel the angelic army more. Like part of this war is for God's people and so anyway, with that and being pillars, there's definitely an increase coming. I don't know what that looks like, but I think I've, I've, I've shared that with you before that with authority comes accountability and res responsibility and stuff. But, but man, like the things that God puts in your heart, take that as like a real person, a real thing. I see like your families. I know that you guys... You guys fight big in the spiritual realm and you fight for each other's families too. But um, yeah, I just, that, that's really about it. I'll, I'll shut up now and let people talk. But um, where's Emily? Oh, hi, Emily. Uh, I just wanted to share something with you real quick. I just, I don't know like what it means or whatever. And I'm not putting you on blast or anything, but I really felt like the Lord um, just wanted me to like reassure you that, that you're incredible and any thoughts from the past that you think that are yours, they're not really your thoughts. And the enemy, he's going to try like all these stupid little tactics and he's going to try to make you think that certain thoughts are from your heart and they're not. Your heart is good. Your heart is pure. The blood of Jesus has completely redeemed you. So don't just, I don't know if that's happened or if it's going to happen or what, but it's totally a trap and it's just old news 
tell the devil it's old news, homie. Um, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just a real, it's like a trick. Like, I just really felt like him trying to convince you, like, no, you're thinking that. Oh, you're thinking that? That's your heart. Oh, you have, and just, just a little seed, planting little seeds of doubt, little seeds of, of lack. I'm less than, I'm not up to them or par or I'm not there yet, wherever there is. Telling you God is in love with your journey right now. He loves you. You're, you're just like his little girl. He loves you so much. So don't, don't ever go there. Okay. Just know every test, every thought, take it captive every time. And you probably know that, but I just, the Lord wants to remind you right now, no matter what's been going on, the devil, he, he's trying to take you out. He's trying to get you to take you out. Yeah. <laughs> so don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 